Well, good morning, everybody. This is Charles Owen from Paladin. Uh, it is a uh, glorious day today. I'm so glad to have you guys here. I'm going to give another few seconds here to let some other folks log in. I know we had a lot of signups for this today, so just give another a minute or less to uh, before we get going. And I'll ask uh, my trusted uh, companion here, Brian, you can hear me. Yes, you got the hand up. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, looks like uh, we'll just have to, those other people just have to log in here momentarily. I'll go ahead and get started with my intro. Again, Charles Owen with Paladin. The subject today that we're going to be discussing in the Paladin U University is best practices for bin tags and tips and tricks also for bin tags. So there's a lot to bin tags. If you've been using them, you know, and uh, we're going to go ahead and learn all about them today. Time frame's probably going to be close to um, 30 minutes, I would say, maybe less, but I promise I won't go over that amount of time. I will be recording this for later pre-reviewing, so you can go to Paladin, um, uh, what is it? Uh, just go to the Paladin Point of Sale website click on websites and select the help portal and uh, webinars, or you can go to portal.paladinpos.com slash webinars, and it'll take you directly to the pre-recorded webinars. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and run through this pretty quickly. So if you get any interruptions, or if, you, if I run over something too fast, again, remember that you can download this and, and watch it again or just watch it online here uh, in the next 24 hours or so. Any questions that you might have, I'll do at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you do have questions, just go ahead and type them in the little window that says questions, and I will get to those at the end. All right, so let's move forward here. So what we're gonna learn today is we're gonna learn, uh, you know, what bin tags are for, what shelf tags are for, what they do. You know, I think those, it's pretty obvious. Uh, then we're going to talk about why managing your own tags is probably a good idea. And then how to set up the bin tag label defaults. Then we're going to go into the different types of bin tags, batch, one-off, that sort of thing. And then we'll also look at the RF terminal, as well as we'll learn about what the LTSR catalog is. That's going to be your Bible or guide to bin tag labels and other things as well. All right, so about bin tags and shelf tags. So they're typically used on pegs and shelves and bins, and they have an adhesive backing, right? The shelf tags, on the other hand, are usually hard stock paper, and they go within the little plastic inserts. We support both of these. There's a wide variety of both that are available and displayed in the LTSR catalog, which there's a link here. But very simply, if you just go to portal.paladinpos.com, and you search for LTSR, it stands for Labels, Tags, Signs, and Reports. You will find a, a whole slew of different uh, available styles and, and, um, and information. So this will be on the last couple of slides. I'll go over and give you a kind of walk you through that catalog. You know, why, is, why do you want to print bin tags in your store? Well, there's Right now, or probably in the past, you've been getting them with your, uh, with your truck delivery, right, from your supplier. Well, if you want to, you can uh, use the Paladin bin tag labels that are included right in Paladin, utilizes our automation. Uh, typically, they're more accurate. It's going to match what prices you have in Paladin when you generate the bin tag just automatically. Prices uh, can be easily modified and changed on the fly and reprinted at any time. And now during these times where inflation is hitting and prices are changing quite frequently, uh, both on the rise and, and then on the fall, uh, you need to be able to make sure that those labels match the prices that are coming up at the, at the check stand. All right, and that will help you also protect your profit margins and of course not make customers upset if they see a different price on the sticker than when they come up to the counter. And oftentimes they're less expensive than buying the pre-printed labels from your supplier, depending on what kind of arrangement you have with your supplier. 
there's a case study here. We have several clients. This is just one that uh, their experience is they experience price inconsistencies between the tags and the actual uh, system, what's in the prices that are in Paladin, and that resulted in lost lost revenue. So it's, uh, you know, when they generate those tags is when you're purchasing those items. Well, prices can change between the time that you order and the time the truck comes in. And in fact, if that happens, then it, it could be off. So uh, it's just one of the benefits, uh, another benefit of printing the labels in-house versus using external resources for that. So the first thing I wanna show you is setting up bin tag label defaults. <clears throat> so if you go into file company tab, right at the top, you'll see tag styles. And at these tag styles, there's multiple different settings, default bin tag style, default item tag style, <clears throat> excuse me, default quantity break bin tag style, and so on. These just need to be set once. And once you've set them, you're good to go. So uh, we have choices, different choices of the different styles that you can choose and pick from. And again, you see those, you will see those in your LTSR catalog. You can, uh, there's some other settings as well that we won't get into, but the one that I do want to mention is the very bottom one, reprint tags when specified columns are changed. So you can identify when you make a change to an inventory item, whether it be through EDI or manually make the change in the actual item in inventory, if any one of these things that are checked are changed, it will earmark that product or that particular uh, bin tag to be printed at a later time when you request batch printouts, for example. And of course, in most cases, it's price, location, um, those are typically the two that are primary that people select, but you can select as many as you want. There's a, a whole slew of them, a lot more than what you see on the screen here. And then of course, you'll wanna save your settings when you're done with that. If you need any help, contact customer support. So in general, how do you print bin tags, right? So how do you create bin tags or a bin tag file to print later? So it's really simple. You just go into reports, you go into inventory and click labels. That brings you to a long list of uh, reports that you can generate. As you can see from the top, down about almost all the way there, it says different bin tag numbers, bin tag format one, two, three, and so on, the last one, 33. Those are different styles. Again, you can see the different styles in the LTSR catalog. Beyond that, you have uh, creating a bin tag information file, which is uh, going to push that file through a different system to get full sheet bin tags versus the ones above will produce bin tags on a item tag or a bin tag, dedicated bin tag label printer. And then at the very bottom one, you do have a sale tag you, you can produce as well, which is a really cool one because that shows if there's anything on sale, It'll show the list price and the sale price on a small tag, which is kind of a cool thing. So this is in general. Now let's let's we're going to dissect this and break it apart a little bit and look at the different ways and types of bin tags that you can produce on different printers on in you know in different for different reasons. So the first one we're going to look at is creating a batch bin tag file for printing on a laser printer using Microsoft Access. So what we do is that bin tag file that we saw above, um, we just select that, create a file, print it on through Microsoft Access, and again, you can pick the style that you want at that time. So let's walk through that process. So first thing is you create a, an information file, right? So you go in to reports, labels, and you choose bin tag information file. Now when you do this, it's not going to print a label or any labels for that matter. What it's going to do is it's going to create a file that can later be brought up by Microsoft Access. And at that point, you can choose what style of label you want and, and uh, where to print it. So you just, uh, based on this information, once you create the file, then you've got a file that goes to another screen here that asks you the specific report settings. 
So in this case, you can identify bin tags for a particular part number or range, department or range, supplier or range, class, subclass, and location or range of each. And then to the right of that, you'll see you have an option to do print all, which will create a printable bin tag for all inventory items selected for that report. Now, let's say you don't select anything on the report settings. You leave everything as default, which is don't select anything. And you print this, it will print a bin tag file of every single item in your inventory. If you have 43,000 items, you're going to get 43,000 items in your bin tag file. All right, so be careful about that one. Use a specific class or supplier or department, for example, if you want to do a refreshing of bin tags across a large number of items. Now, more typically, you'll, you'll, you'll select the one that says limit items that require bin tags. Well, how do I know if it requires bin tags? Well, in the inventory, when you change the price or location or any of the other fields that you've identified, to uh, print a bin tag later, it will mark a little checkbox in the inventory on the general tab next to bin tag that says print later. And then when you produce this bin tag information file or other bin tags, you can limit it just to items that have that checkbox, which means these are the items that have been changed. But rem uh, so what this will do is it will print all the bin tags that have that checkbox. Now, if you want to narrow it down even tighter than that, and you don't select a report setting, you can go to the next item, which is print changes since. It is a date range and a time range. So you can say print bin tags since my EDI or electronic data interchange invoice file came in at eight, let's say it came in at 8.38. So you're gonna say print changes since this date at 8.37 a.m for example, and it will produce a bin tag file of just those items. So the other one, the reset bin tag files, we're going to, or flags, we're going to look at that uh, and dive down a little bit deeper into that. Now, when you run this report, nothing happens except it creates a file, and that file is under C drive, palette and POS, export bin tag information dot or bin tag info dot text file. So that is the file that it is creating. Now you have to go to step two, which is you have to uh, bring up Microsoft Access and we'll go through that in one minute. First thing I wanna talk about is how important this reset bin tag flag is. All right, so reset bin tag flag is exactly that. Those items that have checked for print later, if you're producing bin tags for them, you probably want to uncheck that box. This enables you to do this. This reset bin tag flag will go ahead and say, all right, take these off so they don't print anymore in my batch, in my batch generation of bin tags. Now it's important to know this. I would first run your file check and verify your file, and then go back and run the same parameters and check that box. Because what if you run your file and you make a mistake or you don't get the labels that you want? If you just go ahead and reset that bin tag file, there's no going back, So you, or flag, you, you, there's no going back. So you wanna make sure that the labels are gonna print correctly first, then go back and use the same parameters that you used before, and then hit reset bin tag flags. Now that will only reset bin tag flags for the range of items that you are printing. So meaning if you just look for department hardware and you wanna run that uh, labels for that or a bin tag information file for the you know department hardware, it will reset all of the hardware items, but if there's print later checkboxes in other departments, it will retain those, all right? So that's an important thing to understand. All right, let's move on. So what's the next step once I have this bin tag information file? Now I need to print labels from Microsoft Access. So you just go to at the very top, this isn't under reports as a module, this is under reports at the very top of the screen next to the menu button. It says reports, and then you can select MS Access Templates. Now, uh, just word of caution, uh, if you haven't and you don't run this very often, you'll probably want to go to the maintain. 
it's to the left of the reports uh, module or, or uh, menu item that you see at the top here. You just go to maintain, download, and you select MS Access Templates. That will refresh the templates so you've got the latest and greatest software templates, labels, reports, and everything else that run in Microsoft Access. So that's important to know. So now you just, uh, when you go into Microsoft Access, it's going to present you with, hey, do you want to print item tags, bin tags, shelf tags, you know, reports, you know, what do you want to print? You would select bin tag, of course. And then once you select bin tag, it's going to give you a full on list of all the different bin tags and different bin tags formats that are, that are offered under Microsoft Access. And then after that, you just go to print and it's going to, ask you how do you want them sorted so if you don't select anything if you're select uh, sorting none it will go ahead and produce that file based in chronological order of, of items that you scan so if you take the uh, rf gun you walk around you scan items and you change prices and you want to make uh, a batch bin tag label for that it will if you select do not put a sort order so none it will put it in chronological order. Important to know. All right, that's how you produce this document, which is presumably a yellow and white uh, sheet of paper with yellow and white lines on it, and it's perforated or, or broken out by 40 different labels on this one sheet. This is a five by eight, 40 sheet label. Now we have different sizes as well, that we can offer, but this is the most standard one to use. And this is what we're looking for, and it may produce one sheet, two sheets, three sheets, it might produce a half a sheet. It's gonna produce whatever's in the bin tag information file. So what would you not use the bin tag information file for printing one label, right? Because if you push it to a bin tag information file, generated the Microsoft Access report, and got this sheet, you would have one label that's usable and 39 other ones that you can't use. So be cognizant of that. Now let's move on to step two. So what are the other types of labels? Well, we can create a batch bin tag label or batch bin tag labels for a dedicated label or bin tag printer, right? It's a much smaller printer, it comes on rolls instead of sheets. And here's how we do that. Now in this case, you go back to generate a bin tag file or a label. So you go to reports, labels, and then you select one of the bin tag format numbers, one through 33. And any one of these will produce all the bin tags that are available for the criteria that you select, just like the batch or the bin tag information file. You also can generate batch bin tags on a dedicated label printer for specific report settings and additional settings. All of them apply just like they do for the bin tag information file. But rather than Producing a file, this is actually going to spit right out onto the onto the uh, uh, bin tag or bin tag printer and print those bin tags right off. All right, all the report settings are the same. Print all again. Be cautious with that one, particularly if you're using it to a bin tag printer, because you know once you send it to the printer, it's just going to go hog wild until it finishes, uh, unless you obviously cancel that request in the printer SKU or queue. And then uh, limit items to uh, items that require bin tags, that's smart to do. And again, if you wanna print from a specific time period, you can set that as well. And you also still have the reset bin tag flags checkbox there as well. All right. Now, um, I, I see an error on this page, number three here. It's not gonna produce a file. It doesn't go to a bin tag information file. It just shoots it right to the printer. So I just copied this for the previous slide and, and I still see that on here. It probably shouldn't be there. Now, you, we've discussed so far how to generate a batch file and push it out onto full sheet labels using Microsoft Access. We've also seen how we can quickly and easily generate batch bin tags on a dedicated label printer that are printed in um, in the same whatever sort order that you want as well. And it goes directly to a printer instead of a file. 
Now we're going to look at just doing a one-off, right? There's multiple ways to do a one-off. Well, the easiest, just go right to inventory, and you'll see uh, print fin tag is going to be on the uh, the first item. I think it's covered on this with the arrow, but it's that first button at the top where it says print bin tag. If you click on that button, it's going to print a bin tag on your dedicated label printer in real time, right off, just boom, done. And this is a very easy way to make a price change and click print bin tag and now you get a bin tag. You just peel it off the dedicated label printer, go and put it on the shelf. Now how it, what it, it determines which label is being printed, which type of label is being printed um, based on what you have in the file setup company tab where we talked about first setting up your bin tags. This is where it gets that information. Now let's go to the to the final way to produce an, uh, a bin tag file and that is using a hit printer meaning a printer that's uh, tied to your belt, belt printer, whatever you want to call it. It's a, a mobile printer if you will it hooks up to the rf gun via bluetooth typically in some cases it's a hard cable but in most cases it's bluetooth this comes with a much smaller roll of of labels those go into the printer and now this is how you can actually print in real time labels onto the your printer on on your hip so the first thing you do is you do when you go into the rf gun you need to turn on your rf unit um, press one to sign on, select overwrite stock on hand or a pen stock on hand, depending on whether you're doing counts or, um, or you know, of, of the um, inventory counts or if you're doing a, an, a pen stock on hand, meaning overstock areas. All right, a message is going to appear. It says bin tag tag output devices attached to printer and you press zero. And then for dedicated label printer, now you press the number of the printer, because you can have up to four different printers, depending on where you are geographically in the store, you can have four dedicated printers set up, one in each corner of the store, and depending on which one you're closest to, you can select that printer. All right. Moving on to print bin tags from label printer uh, using the RF gun. So this is step number six for printing for the printing method, select the mode that you require. So there's gonna be some other questions that come up that say print all, meaning every single item that you scan, print a bin tag for. You may not want that. The next one says to print changes only, meaning if there was a price change or a change of some sort on the RF gun, then it will produce a bin tag at the uh, when you move on to the next item it'll just automatically print a bin tag if you change the price or the location all right to print a bin tag on demand using the rf gun at the price field just enter the pound symbol just the number symbol you just press that and boom a label will generate out of the printer right on your on your belt regardless of whether you made any changes or not <clears throat> now to set up the RF mobile printer you go to file setup network tab you select the uh, RF attached printer and you select the mobile printer model <clears throat> scroll down to save then you click on the company tab then you go to the RF terminals pane and in the RF printer bin tag style list select the bin tag format number that you want so this is how you determine what format of bin tag that you're going to use on this mobile printer. Click save, then close. So the last and final thing that we're doing here is we're looking at <clears throat> referencing, how do you reference the LTSR catalog? And again, it stands for labels, tags, signs, and reports. So you can go to <clears throat> info.paladinpos.com slash LTSR underscore catalog.pdf or just click on the button. The, the link on this page. You'll see that it does have quite an extensive table of contents. <clears throat> it goes up to 40, I think 44 pages at this time. 
but we have uh, a number of pages that show bin tags, shelf tags, quantity break tags, sale tags, item tags, outdoor tags, so if you want to do plants, as well as labels, <clears throat> signs, and reports. So we do do sales signs as well, and some custom reports, which are offered, again, all of these are offered under the MS Access reports. Let's look at a sample page. So you'll open up, you know, the first page for bin tags, and it's going to say bin tag one, bin tag two, bin tag three. You can see that midway down on each of them. Then we have four, six, and seven below that. What this shows is the size. It shows whether or not it's an adhesive label and which particular um, barcode format it's using. But more importantly, the most important thing is looking at the label itself and seeing that all the information is what you want and it's in the position that you want and the size that you want. If not, move on to the next one, the next one, until you get to one that meets your requirements. If you don't find one that meets your requirements, we will write a custom bin tag for you for a small fee. Below that, you have where this label is provided, you know, what printer it's provided on. We have laser, desktop, portable. So in this case, bin tags number one, two, three, and four, Print on all three printer types, full sheet laser, desktop, and the portable or mobile. Below that, we have the different colors of labels that we offer. You know, we have yellow and white, we have gray and white, we have white, pure white on the laser. The desktop, we also have and add a red one to that and same with the portable. So we provide all of these labels, we do sell these, in our store, if you go to store.paladinpos.com, or if you click on the help button in Paladin above and click on store, you'll be able to order these. And if you have any trouble or questions about it, just call our customer service. And that, my friends, will uh, conclude the FinTag webinar and information. Hopefully, it was helpful to you. I am not. I do see a question right here. Let me uh, just finish this commercial here and just show you that we are having a Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And uh, our next webinar is on October 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And it's how Paladin can protect your business. So, you know, stay tuned for that. So the question I have on here is, can you use non-adhesive labels in an RF printer? I know you can do item tags and adhesive tags, bin tags on the printers, on the uh, mobile printers, uh, if you have a certain type, because we do sell two or three different types of printers. Some of them support the item tag and the bin tag, some just support bin tag. So it's really important to know. I'm thinking yes is gonna be my first answer here. I We'll have to verify that, but if you're looking for a non-adhesive shelf tag for the RF printer, well, you know what? You know what would tell us is our LTSR catalog. Why don't we just go there, and I can tell you what that looks like. So let me uh, let me do that real quick. So portal.palampos.com. Easy for me to type here. And then we're going to go to LTSR. So I'm right here, guys. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to search for LTSR. And in here it says LTSR catalogs. You click on here. There's a nice little link that goes right to it, brings it right up. And now if we go to shelf tags, sorry to make you dizzy here, I'll scroll on down. I see shelf tags start here. Portable, no. Portable, no. Portable, no. Portable, no. Portable, no. Uh, it's looking like it's a no at this point, and it might be a limitation on the printer itself. I would think because they're a little larger and they are hard stock, and that might be the limiting factor here. So, yes, sorry at this point. 
it does not look like the portable printers are capable of printing on uh, the shelf tags. If there's any other questions, go ahead and ask them. Uh, I will just summarize this. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for attending today. I really appreciate it. Your time is valuable. And just by the fact that you're here um, is, is great because we know that you want to help grow your store, build more, expand your knowledge with Paladin, and learn how to be more efficient uh, using the tool that you have in place. Again, um, we appreciate it. If there's any questions that you have, contact customer service. And you can always go to our retail science, our webinars, and our store site for more information. And God bless y'all. Thank you so much for attending. I don't see any questions, so we're going to sign off. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.